analysis on this story now. Let's bring in French politics expert Jim Shields, who joins us live from Bristol. Jim, thank you for joining us. Is this kind of corruption case unusual in France? Well, there have been plenty of trials of politicians in recent decades, the most high level being former President Jacques Chirac's conviction in 2011 for misuse of public funds while mayor of Paris. And another former president, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, is right now awaiting trial later this year on charges of corruption and influence peddling. But the Fillon trial is different since it determined the outcome of a presidential election that Fillon was set to win. And unlike Chirac and Sarkozy and, and many other cases, Fillon is charged with misusing public funds not for political gain, but for purely personal gain, self-enrichment, an altogether grubbier charge in public perception. Certainly. But some, back, some backers of Fillon actually say that that kind of practice, uh, hiring your family, your wife, your children, was actually once very common. Yes, that's, this is the trial of one politician, uh, his wife and his parliamentary replacement. But it's also the trial of a whole system of parliamentary benefits and allowances with very weak controls and oversight, so wide open to abuse. It will be up to the prosecution in this trial to show that little or no work was done by Penelope Fillon to justify her salary as a parliamentary assistant. By the way, a role that she herself explicitly denied ever having in a press interview some years back. The difficulty in prosecuting might lie in proving a negative. In other words, that the lack of evidence that Madame Fillon did the work means that she didn't do it. Meanwhile, the Fillons and their defence will seek to argue the opposite, that she did do sufficient work to earn all of her very high paychecks. So let's say, that, let's say this goes downhill for Francois Fillon. Just how bad could this be? Depending on the outcome, the Fillons could face up to 10 years in prison, a very heavy fine, which I've seen quoted up to a million euros, and being barred from public office. Now, that won't affect Francois Fillon in the sense that he says his political career is over, but it would right now affect Penelope Fillon, who is a municipal councillor in the Sartre uh, constituency and who is set to run again in the forthcoming municipal elections. The National Assembly, too, is insisting that if convicted, the Fillon should repay in excess of a million euros. There has already been a related case here against the billionaire friend who took Penelope Fillon onto the payroll of his literary review, La Revue des Deux Mondes. He has pleaded guilty to employing her for little, then no work at all and was sentenced to eight months prison suspended and a hefty fine for misuse of corporate assets. So part of the case the Fillons are in now has had a preliminary outcome already. Jim, you were mentioning this before, but I think it's important to go a little bit deeper. It's important to remind people that this case really cracked open the two-party system in France, the socialists and the right, the Les Republicains, they're known now, and it really paved the way forward for Emmanuel Macron. Tell us a bit more about that. Yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, Fillon's fall from grace opened the way for Macron's election by default, Fillon was the out-and-out favourite to win the 2017 presidential election. When he fell into disgrace, Macron, against a disgraced centre-right candidate and a very weak centre-left candidate, came through the gap to win. It also caused the implosion of a Republicans' party that should have been carried to power on Fillon's presidential coattails. For the first time in the Fifth Republic, the mainstream right presidential candidate was eliminated on the first round of voting, and his Republicans' party collapsed in the parliamentary elections that followed. And from that catastrophic failure, the Republicans have not yet begun to recover. So this is a case of 
huge political significance that's now to be played out in the legal context of the courts. Jim, we're just hearing now that the trial of François Fillon has been postponed uh, at least till Wednesday, and this because of a strike of lawyers. Uh, this is about the Frenchest story we could ever talk about, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's well put. Yes. It looked likely, in fact, from early morning that this was going to be the case. I mean, obviously, um, the lawyers, the legal profession has been out up in arms. Uh, against uh, Macron's uh, pension reforms. And they've staged quite a dramatic demonstration outside the, the courts today, uh, blockading them in effect. So it did look likely that the case would be uh, put back to Wednesday, partly because uh, Fillon's lawyers want to show solidarity with their protesting colleagues as part of this wider dispute against the proposed pension reforms. Jim, uh, François Fillon, in his defence, says that this case was a political one against him. Do you think that that's a defence that his lawyers will be able to stand on and get him freed? It's hard to tell. And as I said earlier, one small part of the case has been settled in a different context uh, to do with uh, Penelope Fillon's employment. Sorry about that. We seem to have lost there the end of uh, Jim Shields' comments, but many thanks to him for his expertise. That was French politics expert Jim Shields speaking to us from Bristol.